today we picked a subject uh, of of fans and uh, what you can do to get more life out of fans. And uh, it's an interesting subject because I certainly don't call myself a fan expert, but I, I uh, at least text almost daily with uh, Mr. Festa, who is a fan expert. And, uh, you know, and I also uh, said last week, I'm going to try to pick an item each week to sort of feature. Well, this is fan week. Uh, so, uh, so I will say before we get started that there are people uh, on this that are not Festa fan users, and they're welcome to be here. Uh, I always say, you know, everybody that is used to buying a Chevy truck and the have had good luck with it. It's pretty hard to get them to switch to that Toyota truck I got out there, uh, and the same whether it be Ford, Chevy, Dodge, or Toyota. But um, I would like to encourage anyone that doesn't use a Festa fan, give me a chance. Give me a chance. There's a reason why I'm a distributor for Festa fans. There's a reason why I've been a Festa fan uh, user for many years. So that's my sales pitch before we start. Um, but I spoke... Uh, with Mr. Festa this week about fan failures. And um, first of all, the main, uh, and I know this from being a distributor, but the main two reasons fans fail in terms of legitimate failures, number one is shipping. And even if you get a fan, I always say that uh, the shippers, I, I refer to UPS, but I don't necessarily want to pick on them, but shippers, uh, if it's a single fan order, I have a lot more uh, shipping failures because I always say they play basketball with it before it gets to you. Uh, but I also have uh, footage of uh, my customers that have uh, cameras on their garage of the uh, of the shipping company literally opening their back door and throwing the fans out so they don't have to get out on the ground. And so. Uh, it's a special challenge for fan manufacturers these days because it seems to become have become a, a larger problem than it used to be. It used to be that the shippers had seemingly had better control of uh, of these these sort of things. And so shippers, uh, I can tell you, Festa does. I can't speak for other shippers, but I'm assuming so. But shippers have worked very hard to make their packaging also help. But just because a fan works for six months doesn't necessarily it wasn't uh, damaged in shipping. A motor mount can be cracked, but still hold for a while. Uh, a, a balancing clip could be knocked loose and not fall off for a while. It could be knocked loose enough that it changes the balance. So there's things that can happen in shipping. But I would say it's about a 50-50 draw on on fan failures that are created, uh, number one and number two are about even. Number two is bearings. And uh, so if you get through the shipping process, which usually you do, I'm just uh, I'm just saying that, uh, that I see plenty of it that happens. But uh, the next thing that's gonna happen is bearing failure. And if there's, if it's not bearing failure or shipping, these little fans are, are pretty hard to uh, uh, to have failures, but the bearings are a pretty difficult process uh, to run 24 hours a day in all kinds of inclement weather, unless you're in uh, Alaska or Canada, of course, and we can talk about that every every week. But uh, <laughs> I see one person grinning, Don. Uh, but uh, I I have some very very positive information about bearings. I will tell you that I can only speak for one fan manufacturer, but I I, I can tell you that any fan manufacturer uh, failures are a, a losing proposition. And if they're gonna have X amount of percentage of failures, it's not just replacing that fan, it's all the time and the uh, shipping and everything else that's involved. And so uh, every fan manufacturer has to be prioritizing minimum fan failures to keep their prices down. Uh, but I will say that uh, I'm not going to speak for the changes because we're, I'd like to get a special guest in here to do it, but uh, but I've seen some changes in the Festa fan when it comes to bearings that I'm very excited about and have a very positive feeling about. So what I'm saying is that at least, as I just said, Fan manufacturers have to all be working on 
doing everything they can to reduce the amount of fan failures. But I am extremely excited about the number one cause of fan failure uh, being bearings. I'm extremely excited about what has happened in the fan that I carry uh, in the last six months. So there you go. The number one and two reasons for fan failure that are, let's say, legitimate are um, are shipping and bearing failure. But then you get into the other things, and uh, uh, it's going to be warranted either way. But when, uh, when fans fail in the first year, uh, Festa always asks for the fan to come back, and he pays for it but he will send you a new fan and a, and a tag so that that fan can come back. So he can tear it down and see, okay, what did we do wrong? What did the manufacturer do wrong? What went wrong to make this fan not make it a year? And I'm glad he does that because it gives him uh, a, a lot of information. But here's, here's what I find. A lot of stuff gets inside those fans. If you're not careful, he says he opens up fans that have wood in them. I'm, ta- I'm gonna tell you the main things he finds inside the fans that he gets back. They'll have wood from construction, they'll have drywall, they'll have insulation's a big one, caulk and PVC cement, guilty, guilty. I can tell you all the time I was uh, doing the mitigation myself, my foreman was always telling me, why do you glob so much cement on? It doesn't take that much, much cement to glue two pipes together. Uh, But I can tell you that I'm not sure I paid enough attention that uh, if I'm gluing the fitting above a fan on an exterior wall or in an attic, I'm sure that I dripped. I am positive I dripped glue into that fan occasionally. Uh, So here I am guilty. If glue drips into a fan, you start talking about balance. Uh, I have pulled apart fans that had insulation inside of them where a uh, guy's in an attic, he's he's got his tail piece of pipe that's gonna go on out the roof. Uh, he's got it laying down in the insulation. He picks it up and a piece gets in it. Well, it'd be all right if that piece blew out. It's not gonna blow out because I use a critter guard, but it, it eventually gets moist and, and wraps itself around the impeller. So uh, I'll go through that once again, but when, um, I asked this question this week, so it would help in this presentation. Uh, But when he tears fans apart, he finds wood, drywall, insulation, caulk, and PVC cement. And I know I've seen plenty of times insulation was in them, possibly myself. But I guarantee you that I have had fan failure over PVC cement. Now, my feeling is, not being a fan expert, but my feeling is if you get PVC cement in a fan and it has any effect on the balance, which it would, uh, then uh, it's still going to be a matter of time before it ruins that fan, or at least it's going to be uh, a much more stress on the bearings. So, you know, uh, above and beyond that, Oh, and Mr. Festa wanted wanted me to be sure and mention all of these things he finds, he's still going to guarantee that fan. It's not like he's going to call you up and say, well, now, wait a minute. There was some uh, wood shavings and some insulation in that fan. I'm not going to give you a new fan because of that. That's not the way he operates. But I think it's important if all of us, me, if I pay a little bit more attention now that I don't own a mitigation company, it's different. But if I paid a little bit more attention to getting PVC cement in that fan and I had a few less returns, it would be beneficial to all of us because it helped keep the cost down. My personal experience is um, uh, bird squirrels and roofers. Every time I went to replace a fan, the first thing I do is look at that roof. And if it looked like a new roof, I'd ask the, I'd ask the consumer, have you had a new roof put on lately? But every time you pull a fan, if you if you hold it upside down and shake it, I can't tell you how many times a roofing nail came out of it. Because roofers are hardworking people that are in a big hurry, and they're not putting a piece of cardboard on top of that exhaust pipe or a cap on top of that exhaust pipe. They're ripping shingles off, and when they're installing the new ones, they're in a hurry. 
So I can tell you many, many times I've turned a fan upside down and shook it and it had a roofing nail in it. Well, nothing to do about it except my own conscience wouldn't let me turn it into the to the manufacturer because it wasn't his fault. Uh, so uh, I can tell you uh, uh, also that uh, if you dug out six or seven dead squirrels, uh, you learn a lesson. Uh, I was never not necessarily a big fan of uh, critter guards. Uh, but we did what we called a squirrel screw. We would take a long pole barn screw an inch down from the top of a pipe because we dug out five or six or seven dead squirrels and we said, we got to find a solution. And we thought a, a long screw uh, screwed horizontally in the top of a pipe would keep a squirrel out and most birds. And, um, uh, and sure enough, it, it did keep the squirrels out. Uh, but I get called to, a, a, to replace a fan one day I open it up and shake it upside down. It has three walnuts in it. So the squirrel got on top of the pipe. Remember, in the wintertime, it's warm air. And warm air represents a possible home for that squirrel or that bird. And so he drops three walnuts down there for later eating. And then he thinks he's going to go down there and can't get down there because of the screw. But the walnuts just beat that impeller to pieces. So uh, I'm a big believer in uh, critter guards, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. But the other thing is fans can't be left not running forever because they will get um, they will get impacted by the environment and by birds, squirrels, uh, a lot of different things. But a fan that's not running, um, these fans are, are, are designed to run forever. And uh, we do a lot of new construction, like a company I had still does, but we make sure that that electrician is going to be there uh, within a week or less. We don't want that fan sitting there not running, but we also want a critter guard on it because um, birds love it too if warm air is coming, coming uh, out of it. And warm air will come out of it even when it's not running because it's got the 56 degree uh, temperature uh, 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 coming up from a pipe from under the floor. And so, uh, so just to, just to go back on that a little bit, uh, you know, you get, you got to be careful that nothing gets in that fan. You got to be, uh, aware that, uh, uh, all my guys in Minnesota, a lot of my guys in Northern climates, they say, I'm not using a critter guard because it works like an ice cube tray and all the ice starts forming on that. And I haven't had that problem. I'm in central Illinois. I haven't necessarily had that problem, but I certainly understand. But uh, I, if I started having trouble with birds and squirrels, and remember the birds love it because um, because it's a warm environment. Uh, so, uh, and now we've got a new rule where you can go up the side of a house. I think the national rule says 20 feet, turn with a 45 to get it away from the siding and um, expel your radon at 20 feet high. Now, you got to still be so far away from the window or door. But that, to me, that's a red flag, a horrible red flag for birds because it makes it easier yet for, uh, for uh, uh, at least birds, possibly other things like mice, varmints. Uh, it's, uh, it looks too attractive to resist if you've got uh, warm air coming out and it's uh, 10 below zero. So I, I, I'm a big fan of, of uh, critter guards. And, and for my friends in Minnesota, I wonder if, uh, if uh, upsizing your exhaust to four inch would be, uh, would be something that would be that they could do. Uh, that has to be their decision. But if you used a four inch critter guard on a three inch pipe, it should compensate for something. Uh, an, a couple of other things that you've got to be aware of, putting a fan on out of level, dumb idea. Uh, that's one thing we were always very meticulous about was making that fan level. Because if you install a fan out of level and a hundred out of a hundred times, if you're doing an exterior system, you can level it all you want. But when you attach that first bracket to the wall coming off of those 45s, it's going to take it out of level every time. But you can get a certain amount of play in the fern coats and whatever. But if you do not install a fan level, that means water, in some cases ice, is going to lay in the low part of that fan forever. So the fan itself is going to be out of balance. Now, it, it, uh, the manufacturers will tell you mounting the fan level is important, 
and in my opinion, you know, now you're now your uh, your entire thing is not only out of level, but it's out of uh, weight balance. And so uh, all of these things put a little bit more stress on the product. So um, we were always good about leveling, bad about PVC glue. And I think there's a few times I was sloppy about getting insulation in the pipe. Uh, but um, always one of our things was level. So it's pretty important to have it level. Another thing I've seen and almost done myself, if you take a fan, see if we can get this, and you're coming in from the top with the with your exit pipe. Don't let it go too far down in the fan. Now, if it's in the top, all it's going to do is really affect the performance of the fan. But where it really gets bad, if it's coming in the bottom, it's going to scrape the impeller and ruin it. So if you let this pipe go through your fern coat and from the if it's through, this is through about two inches, two and a half inches. When I tightened that fern coat, it was totally scraping the impeller and ruining the fan. So be aware, a lot of the new guys especially don't realize that you can't run this pipe very far through, but what you aren't going to damage the fan and, and possibly ruin it right on the spot. And uh, and if, you, if you're on the top and you run it too far, you're, you're severely affecting the performance, which could uh, have a callback uh, and have you scratching your head because the radon numbers didn't get low enough. So remember, this is important too. This can ruin a fan and affect performance also. So uh, once again, uh, I'm a big believer in quitter guards. And for those guys that that have the icing up or are, are, are convinced that it is a has a big effect on the uh, icing over, uh, I think boosting to a four inch exit pipe could do nothing but good either way. But um, at least, as I said, I used to run a long pole barn screw, a three inch pole barn screw horizontally through through the pipe to at least keep uh, some of the squirrels and birds out. Um, it's amazing when you pull a fan, how many times you find uh, uh, bird things in it, the things that you think birds have dropped in it. So. So let me look at my notes here again. Um, you know, like I say, there are certain people that are watching this that haven't tried these fans. I encourage them to do it. But if you want to reduce your failures, uh, you know, keep stuff out of the fan and out of the pipe. Uh, and uh, don't put the pipe in too deep. Don't install your fan out of level. And don't leave the fan not running for a long period of time. Don't leave that fan not running. If you're not going to run that fan, cover up the exit pipe. Because it's amazing the stuff that will get in there without the positive pressure against it. And remember, Fest is going to warrant it no matter what. He's going to open that fan up and it's going to be a David Smith full of cement, PVC cement fan. But he's still going to say, well, I'll send him a new fan. Uh, uh, so it's not that it's not warranted, but if we all reduce our uh, uh, fan warranties, then the price gets to be kept down. I do know from, from being a distributor, I always found it kind of funny that certain companies have considerably more failures than other companies. And I scratched my head for the 10 years I've been a distributor trying to figure out why. Why does this company... I've, I've always said, I wish my company had all the failures. I don't want any of my customers to have any failures. But it is very true that some companies have a considerably higher failure rate than other companies. Is it due to being a little bit sloppy like David Smith was on this PV cement? Probably. But I've never been able to put my finger on it. So uh, so that's my, that's my take on... Uh, on trying to do a better job of protecting these fans because we're asking a radon fan to do a lot of work. You're asking a motor to pull moisture every day of its life, every minute of its life, to, uh, to run through icing over problems, to run 24 hours a day, and to run into every climate you can possibly expect, and to never stop running for 10 years. So what other what other motor in the world is do you know of that's being asked that much? 
I don't know of anything that's being asked that. Not, an air conditioning uh, unit is being asked quite a bit, but an air conditioning unit is not necessarily pulling moisture from the ground either. So, um, so I don't know. Does anybody else got any comments or questions? That kind of covers what I wanted to say about fans other than please call me if you've never used these fans. Yeah, that air conditioner gets a six-month break. So, <laughs> Yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in, you know, those of you that are either watching this, uh, and I'm, I apologize, those of you watching on Facebook and YouTube will upload the whole video. I, it was cutting out the audio for the first half of this, and so uh, those of you who jump back in and are watching it, we're glad you're here. But uh, <clears throat> those of you that are either on Facebook, uh, YouTube, or if you're sitting in the chat here, have you seen things that have made like that issues you've had with fans questions that you've had or things that you think maybe you've done or maybe you didn't do uh, i mean this is the time you've got david here to ask you know something that you've maybe uh tried to install and it didn't work or maybe there's a better way once again i i encourage all of you to turn it upside down and shake it anytime you pull one and uh, just as a, a point of interest, uh, one time I had a fan on that couldn't have been on for two days. And heck, I barely had enough money to feed the kids. Uh, and uh, I, I dig out, a, I, I take off a fan and there's a squirrel half in and half out. And uh, I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and so I put a new fan on it, but in my own mind, uh, I couldn't return this fan, so I'm like, I'm going to have to get this squirrel out of it, and this fan's not damaged. I'm going to have to put this fan back on because I simply cannot take a $100 loss on a fan. But if any of you ever tried to pull a squirrel out of a fan, you're going to need a, a chain and a, a truck on the other end uh, pulling that squirrel because it ain't going to come out. Uh, they're, uh, uh, so uh, pretty soon I realized that was a stupid idea. You said the squirrel was half. I wondered if half of a squirrel was in the fan. Yeah, <laughs> and the yeah, other yeah. the other half was somewhere else. <laughs> well, well, if you really think about it, once they get their front legs into something, they can't back out. Yeah, the back legs just dangling, but uh, it, it's not a pretty sight. You you definitely uh, uh, it was something that that uh, keeps you up a little bit at night for a couple nights. It's a good reason to have you know a couple extra fans on hand um uh, yep. you know not yeah. just to buy one fan at a time so yeah 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 and there's there's some areas that don't have as many squirrels as say central illinois does to either but uh uh but birds birds are i always say that uh my opinion about birds getting into to radon systems is if it's very cold uh, I think that a bird can say, "Hey, I'm going to I'm going to perch on the uh, on this uh, the rim of this pipe because I've got it's going to keep me warm, uh, and so I'm going to perch here. But if that bird loses its balance or goes into the mode that birds go into, where that looks like they're dead but they're not, uh, that uh, uh, then that bird falls in." And so I've dug dead birds out uh, of pipes too. And I've always said, you know, without that quitter guard effect, um, I think birds will perch on a pipe to stay warm uh, because it doesn't make, uh, it makes a lot of sense for a bird to think it's going to be a nesting zone with this new 45 degree rule, but it ne didn't necessarily, with the positive air pushing against it, the vertical exhaust doesn't make a lot of sense, but uh, I can tell you birds are always looking for a place to nest. And I look at these new these new rules where you've got these 45s coming off these houses and they're just open to the world. And I keep thinking, well, I don't know about this. I just don't know that this is going to work correctly. So uh, I, I encourage you to consider that when you're following the, the way I understand the new rule was uh, written because of the uh, complaints that uh, uh, due to OSHA that uh, uh, ladder rules were being violated on these 30-foot tall houses. And and I agree. I'm not so sure that 
they could have done a little bit better than 20. But either way, maybe it should, needs to be nothing as long as you can meet uh, uh, re-entrapment requirements. So, uh, so, but if I was just, if I was in Alaska and I was just uh, uh, putting it out the band sill, you better believe I'd be using a credit card. So, uh, so I'm a believer in them based on the, how many birds and squirrels that I've dug out of them over the years. So any other comments about it? This Got is going to be an easy one. I thought this is going to be a one. tough one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not seeing anything in the, in the Facebook, uh, Facebook or on, on YouTube right now. So, uh, we, 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 I, I got the email out late today on, on the, the topic. So, you know, take this week, think about it. If you've got, um, you know, if you've got idea or, you know, thoughts about fan failure or, you know, you've got, uh, you know, experience on, on that. Um, but it is, it's, you know, it's, it's important not only when we talk about the fan failure, but also to know, that, you know, FES has got you covered on that. And so, you know, that, you know, they want you to send that fan back in probably gets damaged more on the shipping back to, <laughs> to FESTA too. <laughs> That's another, sure. yeah. Sure. So, sure. but you know, if you get enough of them, then you can, you know, you can really audit those, those results, uh, you know, and look for those things. Um, and I will say, uh, I don't know if David said this, but, uh, you know, take good notes when you pull a fan off, you know, take good, if you're sending it back to, to Festa, that anything that you can provide helps the manufacturing process. So uh, I pulled this off, uh, you know, after a hard freeze. Uh, I pulled this off, you know, after a heavy rain. Um, I pulled this off and, you know, it looked like um, somebody had hit it with the mower. You know, it, you know, there's 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 a scrape all the way down the side of the house where you know the mower and then it hits the fan and it goes around, um, or it looks like there you know there was a there was a baseball sitting underneath the fan and there's about a baseball sized dent on the side, you know that kind of thing. You know, Daryl's going to look at that and be like, "What's this dent from?" But if you, any information that you can give that's going to throw that thing out of whack helps. Okay, well this is an isolated incident or okay, this is how it's affecting to, to cold or to hot to, you know, to, um, you know, the, to roofer nails or, you know, whatever it may be. So especially if you tip it over when you go to pick it up and you don't, you know, you know, you throw that stuff in a, in a Ziploc bag and <laughs> send it with the fan and let them know, you know, here's what, here's what went through it. Here's what survived. Um, I'm sure he appreciates that information. Well, and, you know, just a minute more on the shipping thing. I didn't cover that too much, but it's it's also relevant to areas. You know, I have certain guys that call me up and say, man, this van, uh, this van was broke when I opened it up to use it. And uh, there are certain guys that have um, a very high percentage of that. And uh, ultimately what, what we do is we, uh, we say, you know, can you, I will call, I will call, let's just use for an example, UPS. I'll call UPS and I will get a hold of that branch and I will speak to the supervisor. But can you also speak to the driver and say, look, this is not acceptable, especially if you have the cheap cameras now everybody can get for their garage and you show any mishandling them. But you can tell if, uh, if you have a, uh, a driver that uh, is not really serious about his job or doesn't have uh, doesn't have the right mental attitude about what he's doing but there's many times that we we try to help from our end but we also encourage the uh the uh, mitigator talk to that driver say hey we know what's going on here and it's not acceptable my my fan supplier is doing a good job of packing this fan and it's still getting broke so something's going wrong here and i just want you to know that he's working on it from his end and, and we'd like to have a, a solution here because it's no fun to get to a job, especially if you've got, you got one fan of uh, eagle size and you know you need an eagle and you open it up to put it on and it's broke. Uh, it's no fun because it's it's become a real inconvenience to you to go back and get another one or to call Dave Smith and have him send you another one. So, Yeah, that last so, mile, that's a, 
that's a rough mile for for these fans um, on the shipping side of things. So, yeah, yeah. and we've all it? we've all had that great UPS guy that we love, and we invite him over for you know family parties, and then he leaves, and then we get the next guy. And, yeah. and it oh, yeah. changes oh. your deliveries. It changes the time. It changes the shape of the oh, package yeah. when they get to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and I will say uh, my wife ordered a, a new um, coffee table. And the packaging on these tables is just in, on TVs. Order a new TV and they could just about throw it off a, a boat into the river and then pick it back up and still get it to you. Uh, the packaging is just getting incredible but we had to send the coffee table back because somehow or another they still uh, still hurt, you know, damaged the table enough that we couldn't accept it. Uh, and it just wrapped incredibly. And so uh, and so I think that, uh, you know, it's the world we live in. But uh, I will reinforce also that all manufacturers of fans, fan returns has got to be their worst enemy. So I know that they all will do whatever they can to uh to limit the returns but one reason i like working there's a lot of reasons why i like working for festa but i do know one of the reasons is he's a he's a year or two ahead trying to figure out better ideas he's constantly working on better ideas and and better ideas you can't come up with an idea today and think it's going to happen next week it's going to take a year for it to get implemented so so being ahead of the game is uh is important and and as i said uh i don't want to speak for him but i'm very very optimistic about the uh the bearing failure being the number one failure for fans i'm very optimistic about that um that item uh being adjusted and changed and we'll we'll get we'll see if he, if we can get him to say more about it but i'm extremely optimistic about the some of the new components uh, in the fans that I sell. Yeah, for sure. Anybody else? Got a few minutes left. Anybody got questions that they want to, want to throw into the chat? You can, um, ask Dave, ask me anything that you've, you've got going on before we wrap up. Yeah. It's, uh, it's amazing what a plate of cookies for your, delivery driver will do for service <laughs> yeah that's amazing. i agree with that uh it's it's amazing uh, if you were getting if you were getting consistent deliveries especially when it's hot or cold uh we always have a cooler out with some gatorades cokes pepsis you know snacks um and those guys are not shy uh they will they will load up on it and you know they may take a dollar's worth of snacks and drinks uh, or two dollars, and uh, they are on. You can set your clock to them after you start doing that. Uh, they don't. They don't drive by so fast. Uh, they're like the uh, the mailman in Funny Farm. If that, that movie when the guy when he drove by and hit the mailbox and everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you all of a sudden they uh, they start being real attentive, and it's it takes a Gatorade, and they're dying. I mean, they're you know you guys are in attics, and they're they're in uh, you know they are in unair conditioned vans, and it's it's rough. So yeah, cookies, uh, uh, gift gift cards, <laughs> you know, like that kind of stuff. It's uh. And learn their name for gosh darn it, like know their name, because uh, it's it's they know yours, sure. <laughs> they know all your secrets. Much, well, and and I, I see enough of them between the business and uh, and uh, home, but uh, they they pretty well pilot on those guys too. I mean, there's days when they certainly don't know. Uh, don't know how they're going to be able to do time management. So they've got their, they've got their issues too. That's for sure. Uh, and, and I also wanted to say, I, we've covered this before and Ben, you know more about it than I do, but I got more and more people saying, Hey, that not very often can I catch that three to four thing, but I am watching it later. And so, um, and so um, I, I tried to fill people in on today. They seem very interested in the subject today. And I hope everybody takes a little bit, away from here because uh 
you know, as as I as I said, I'm totally guilty of the PVC uh, cement thing, and I know that I've gotten PVC cement inside a fan before, and simply didn't dawn on me the uh, impact that that could have on a fan until I got to know a little bit more about fans. You know, I'm just rolling around saying, "Oh, it's a fan," but uh, now that I've uh, been in a different uh, set of shoes for ten years. Uh, I see. Yeah, that was that was kind of dumb that you didn't even think about the impact of uh, of cement dripping off of that pipe where you put three times more than you needed and dripping into the fan. So. Uh, so, yeah, I think that uh, I I learned something uh, that way. And so uh, I think that uh, you guys, some of you guys are probably like, I can't believe how many roofing nails Dave Smith says he's gotten out of fans by turning them upside down. I never thought about turning it upside down and shaking it. And you'll be surprised if you do that, some of the, some of what you uh, are, will, will come up with. But, but I, I will say this, a critter guard uh, stops a lot of that. And whether it introduces other problems such as icing up, I'm not sure of. I certainly don't see it in central Illinois, but I'm not going to talk for my buddies in a, in Alaska and upper Minnesota. Uh, if, uh, if they think it's acting like an ice cube tray, then then I'm going with them. Uh, but uh, but it sure does uh, eliminate uh, debris and uh, animals. And uh, you know, while we're on the subject of that, um, I did a little bit of uh, I think I did a video on it, but I did a little bit of research too. I think everybody I spoke a little bit about the the uh, study I did on uh, the effect of passive systems. Uh, several years ago that got a, got a very large uh, grant from the EPA to be uh, to be researched. But another thing about uh, radon systems, it's a little bit unrelated. If you have a passive system and that house happens to make it, you know, a properly done passive system, I can prove to you there are some, it, it is of some effect. It's just that nobody does them properly. It's not a radon guy. But if, if a p- passive system happens to be enough, or if the house is just naturally a 3.0, or the passive system helps it get to a 3.0, next year it's not going to be that good. And the reason it's not going to be that good is there's nothing preventing leaves, dirt, bird poop, everything else from getting in that pipe. And every day that pipe becomes more clogged because you've only got three inches to fill. And so if you ever watch the video I do on uh, on the um, the uh, advantage to putting a suction pit under a passive system with a core drill, opposed to that dumbass T that the uh, that the experts seem to think you need to do, uh, you need to see that because I, I literally take that pipe and I start adding crumbled up leaves and I put pepper in to sort of uh, signify just dirt particles and. And uh, I add some uh, a little bit of stuff to, to to sort of duplicate what what would go into a pipe, and when you're doing it in a three inch pipe, it's not long before the effectiveness of that is is shot, and the effectiveness is shot mostly uh, because it's a dumbass idea, but secondly because um, because there's no positive force pushing uh, pushing that debris out, and so an open pipe. I mean, think about it. An open pipe to anything is going to fill with dirt and fill with leaves that turn into dirt or, or earth. And uh, so um, and so I'm not sure why I added that in, but I was thinking I was thinking about that, that uh, that debris has a whole bunch to do with it. Uh, and that's another reason that uh, a, a critter guard's handy too. We even put them on passive systems, what few we build. You know, whenever we build a passive system for somebody, uh, before we get done, we're talking to that builder about, hey, give me another $350 and let me activate this and give you a five-year warranty to present to your uh, to your, uh, uh, to your your buyer. And we've discussed this before, but the very, very few passive systems that we install before we're talking that builder into into logically doing what's right. Uh, and uh, when when that first came about, that's another, the American Lung Association actually ended up with another re- really large grant because of, uh, I started doing that with builders. 
and the first reaction was negative uh, because of the energy. Uh, what came came about was, uh, well, now you're fixing all these houses before they've even been tested in the framing stage. What if that house didn't need fixed? And uh, my argument with the people that were asking that question um, was, I don't care what the numbers are. I'm reducing it even further by putting a fan on. Do you want to argue the fact that if it's a naturally a three, but I can get it down to a 0.2, that that's not a better uh, living environment? So in other words, I presented that argument and uh, ended up working. And uh, uh, American Lung Association got a rather sizable grant that we called uh, Healthy House. And uh, uh, did some work and some videos and some um, some uh, some promotion on that idea of of just putting it in every house. And while we're on that subject, since we seem to have time, but while we're on that subject, um, you know, I think I've touched on this. But the new Illinois rules, uh, I think we had our last meeting to discuss it. And uh, one of the positive things, in my opinion, is it's going to, my understanding is, it's going to be right in the Illinois rules that any new home has to be tested and fixed if needed before it's sold. And uh, my question to the director is, how in the heck are you going to get that approved with all the opposition you've got uh, in the state of Illinois between the, the people that really have money, the, such as realtors and builders, how are you going to get that through? And he says it's already in an inter international code. So, but he says he think it will it will tremendously uh, make it bring it to light if he also enters it in the Illinois rules. So, I mean, technically, if I go to a new house to mitigate it, uh, and uh, it it has nothing but a a poorly done passive system, then I can ask the question: Well, uh, didn't your didn't your uh, builder tell you that this house had to be tested before it was sold to you? Do you have any do you have any proof that it was tested? You should have had had a uh, the test result should have been uh, within your paperwork because that's the international and state code. So I feel like that's a big deal, especially you guys that are in a are in a um, community that is uh, progressive and build new construction. Uh, so I'm I'm pretty excited about that uh, that that uh, that rule being uh, sort of uh, magnified by getting it in in at least one of the state state codes on top of the international code and you know I all these things I speak of are by um, uh, by word of mouth uh, so uh, but pretty trustworthy word of mouth. So. Cool. Well, I'm not seeing any, any more comments here on the uh, on either Facebook or on on YouTube. Um, if nobody else has any other questions on on stuff, while we've while we've got David here, you can certainly chime in and interrupt me. But um, we will uh, we'll be back. I I looked today, David. I I keep track of the numbers of uh, of these. And when I send out the email, today is the uh, the twentieth uh, call that we've done, and so uh, thank you guys for participating in in twenty of these. We should have some some award for uh, I think Don and and Kyle have been to darn near every one. Uh, let's see, Tim, yeah, Tim's been to a bunch of them. So yeah, we uh, we do appreciate you guys uh, showing up, and 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 we know. Uh, well, it feels like there aren't a ton of people, uh, you know, on during, during the call itself, you know, we're, we're seeing dozens and dozens of, of views, uh, on Facebook later and on YouTube later. So we hope sure. that this is beneficial for you. Um, sure. and the other thing I'll say is if you have, um, if you have topics that you, that you want us to cover, like, you know, send them to me, send them to, to David when you talk to him. Uh, put them on Facebook. Uh, we've got lots of we lot, lots of conversation happening on Facebook as well. Uh, but it but it's great for us to have some topics that matter to you guys that we can that we can bring up and 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 use each week. So um, we're we're glad you guys are participating and part of it. And um, hopefully we're 
we're seeing some some changes in your business from the stuff that you're learning here each week. So, yep. I'm, I'm hoping and thinking everybody's going to get a little busier as soon as the families get uh, get the kids in in school. For sure, for sure. I'm I'm seeing it just in 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 traffic. Uh, you know, for for the clients that I'm paying for ads on Google Ads, uh, they're the search is down. So it's it's not even you know that your phone calls are down. There's actually fewer searches for it right now. So it's it's the the p the the, the pie is getting smaller. And so depending on the 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 you know what what piece of the pie you're getting, it you know it has gotten smaller. Um, hopefully the pie gets bigger. We got room for everybody in you know inside, but. Um, that is why you want to, you know, really, you know, dominate whatever share of the pie you're going to get, right? Um, so sure. if there's if there's a hundred leads coming in in the course of a of a month, you know, we want you to get seventy of them, uh, you know, so that you you know, if you put the time and effort into it, that when that shrinks down and there's ten leads coming in, you get seven of them. And so the, the the statistics stay the same, and you know when it's when it's fair game for everybody. So sure, no. Uh, do remember take advantage of that downtime because you got to have the mentality it's temporary. Yeah. And call your past customers or come up with ideas that Ben has suggested. Uh, find ways to take advantage of the downtime because uh, when it disappears, it disappears uh, sort of like a magic act. Uh, you can be sitting there one night saying, boy, I don't know if I got a job for the rest of the week. And the next day, your job is answering phone calls and doing bids all day because you had four calls or five calls. I've had as many as 16 in one day. And, yeah. uh, uh, you know, it's just it's going to it's going to happen. So take advantage of any downtime you have. And remember all the presentations you can do. There's tons of people including real estate offices, but there, you're, there's other places. Uh, uh, you can offer your services to libraries. You can talk to building inspectors. You can do a lot of things, including calling past customers. And uh, I, I, had a, I had a call today. I sold a truck, uh, 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 I don't know, six months ago, and I had a guy detail it, and that guy contacted me today and asked me if there was any other services he could do for me. He would know when I was buying a new truck, but I mean, Good for you. You contacted me. I'd only used you once, and I was happy with your service. But you contacted me and asked me if there's something else you could do for me. And and I had thought about a, a treatment on my new truck, and he kind of regenerated that thought. So don't think you can't call your past customers and uh, uh, you know talk to them. Uh, get your get your make that positive connection and uh, keep. Keep thinking about who you can talk to, what groups you can talk to. It could be a group at church. It could be the VFW. It could be uh, the library. It could be the building uh, code people. There's a lot of people you can talk to, but you you got to go after it. Also, uh, fix your stuff right now. <clears throat> you got broken stuff. Fix it. Uh, <laughs> fin finish those projects at your house that you've had sitting around for 18 months. Get like get. Feel, feel some, and, and, and the third thing, and, and, and in all honesty, uh, you know, those of you that have been working hard to, to get some rest, like take some time and do, do some, you know, if you've got a day off, yeah, you can, you can work on the business, you can work on your stuff, but if you like fishing, go fishing. If, if you have, if you like to play golf, play, play a round of golf, think about that thing that you love to do that you haven't done in six months because you're so busy because recharging your body recharges you for when that picks back up and it makes it and, and you're not going to last thing you want to get is sick because you, you you work yourself too hard so use this time to 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 spend some time with a friend you know to take a spouse out to you know to, and do something uh, it's important try not to get caught in that trap that uh, I don't know what I'm going to do because if I don't have any business for the next month, I'm going to have to get another job. Try not to get in that trap. Try to take the other uh, the other approach to it. I'm going to do what I can right now to, uh, to build my business because when I'm doing two jobs a day and I'm answering uh, two or three bids, I have no time to even run my business. I have to let Ben run it. Uh, but Right now, you have uh, if it is, if you are one of those at slow times. Right now, you have time to run 
run your business the way you would like to, uh, just don't let um, don't let the negative thoughts affect affect you running your business because it is simply the way this business works. And sure. uh, uh, yeah, so don't look at downtime as necessarily being negative. It will come back, and you need to take advantage of it to get your name out there more. Uh, you know, you need you need everyone in this town to say, "Oh yeah." I've heard of you. Uh, my neighbor, my neighbor told me about you. Uh, you don't need to walk into the gas station, walk into the convenient mart to get a Coke, and uh, the uh, and the person at the counter see your name without saying, "Oh yeah, I I I heard that I heard about you. You were meeting with the with my church group and talking to them about the dangers of radon. I I heard your name. Bang. The more you do it, the more you, everybody knows your name so keep up keep up the good work and everybody you need to have a good weekend and we'll talk again next week all right guys thanks we'll see you